go with all this. Well, there you go. Now, hey, Marcella. This time I'd like to call a drainage board meeting to order with the approval of the November minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, November 13th. Second. Board made second. All in favor? 13th. Aye. Oh, motion carried. Uh, surveyor's report. Surveyor's report. Uh, one thing that's not on the agenda that I do see here is the 2024 drainage board minute uh, board meetings for 24. Anybody have any questions on those dates or any concerns? John, is that April went all right with you? Um, I don't. I didn't look at my son's schedule yet, but I think that's usually spring break, first week of April. So if we can maybe move that back a week. Move that back a week, if you don't mind. No. <clears throat> April 8th, April 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 April. February 5th meeting. I, I will not be here, but that's not a reason to move the date, but just FYI. Well, usually in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, there usually hasn't been a February meeting. Correct. Uh, I, I, that's from, from what I heard. There usually wasn't a February meeting. We can still have one, but it just depends on Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah McNamara was usually out of town <clears throat> in February, so. So we can we can leave it, but uh, we can change the uh, April date. Where are you going to be, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> On my way south, sunny and warm. So, well, since next year will be my last year as a commissioner, I vote that we go to every single one. You enjoy this so much, huh? There you go. Do we need a motion on that or anything? I'll make a motion that we approve the 2024 drainage board meeting date as presented, with the exception of. The April meeting, make that April 8th instead of April 1st. Second. Second, yeah. Motion to date seconded all in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, motion carried. Next, we have payment to contractors. What now? Oh, I'm sorry. The payment to contractors. Uh, uh, yes. I'm sorry. Not even. Payment to contractors. Anybody have any concerns on the payment to contractors? That uh, that bill at H and D, the payment they got. They did. Yeah, they did. That did not include. That wasn't what I left on the desk that day. There was no application on that fifteen hundred dollars. That was chemical only. That's the one he, he sent me, resent me. He sent you. He resent it, yeah. Well, that's what he said that as him and the one that I brought up had an app had application on it. I'll double check it. The original one. Yeah, okay. No, that's I asked him for it after we didn't get it, and that's the one he sent me. So I'll double check. Okay. Any other questions in regards to payment to contractors? Make a motion to accept the payment to contractors as outlined. Second. Motion made, second and all in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carried. At this time, we don't have any change of assessments. We're all up to date on the assessment changes. That's all I have right now, Mr. Chairman. Are we ready for the urban drain petition? There's so many. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tom, you want to just jump ahead and get the these guys so they can get out of here and then we'll do the urban drain? Uh, the last few. Where is the... Uh, for council to accept that these were posted proof of, publication. proof of publication. So Bobby called me and there's a specific law that applies to public works projects, which trains are considered public works projects. 
Um, if they're under $50,000, we have to solicit three bids, wait seven days, and then we can open them as long as we've solicited the three bids. We don't have to go through the publication process. Um, if it's over that, then we do. So I don't know if any of these, I mean, typically the ones I've been involved with in the years I've been here, they're, they don't go over $50,000. Uh, generally speaking. some of some of these might but i i thought a couple of years ago they jumped that up to 150 thousand so there is between 100 or between 50 and 150 thousand there is there's more um stringent requirements um so yeah but but i mean i don't know i mean we can open them we can see we can we can we can see if they're over 50 or not. If you guys want, we can always reject all the bids um, if they are and, and see if we, we have to, to publish them. Um, if they're under 25,000, we don't even have to wait the seven days. Here's the other thing. Were these, when were these, when were bids solicited? When were they um, Thursday? So we don't, we haven't met the seven day waiting requirement for something over 25. So if you think they're gonna be over 25, we can't open them because we have to wait seven days. When did that start? Yeah, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one before. Well, what I, years ago, I mean, we always had to have, before I asked for the bid, I always had to have proof of publication for council. And that's the can best we, way to do it. Them? Contingent on waiting the seven days? No. No. We have to we have to keep them sealed. We can't open them until the seven days has passed if we think it's going to be over twenty five thousand. And I agree. I'm publication. I mean, putting putting in the Mishwalk Enterprise is the best way to do it because then you're completely covered. But and then we don't have the waiting period, so we can just. There's still the waiting period. I mean, if you publish it there, I mean, by the time it gets published, you're, you're looking at the, it's usually like 10 days, I think, before they get it in. You can correct me. I don't know. I mean, I publish stuff with them. They're pretty quick, but I mean, it takes a little bit for them to. Well, I've never heard, had to do any of this. So I don't you know. remember proof of publication. I do. On, we've never done it on bids. We've always done it on um, like the urban drain petition coming up. No, I had to, whenever, when any one of them come up, I don't care whether it was $4,000 or 40000 I always had to ask for proof of publication and uh, assist it. And, and, and proof yeah. of publica I mean, publication is the best method, but it's not required. What we do have to do is wait the seven days. So we can't open these right now. Okay. But for the future, if we, pub if we publicize it, we can receive the bids and open them at the meeting as long as the, the publication was 10 days prior to the meeting. Seven days. Seven days, okay. Yes, sir. So the bids have to be let out seven days prior to this meeting mm -hmm. to make it legal? Yes. And Tom, I agree, I, I remember that distinctly. You always would ask for proof of publication. Yeah. Well, it, it, and if I can, chime in here a little bit on this you know the county in the middle of this year came up with a new agreement contract that all contractors not just ours that we do business with but in the county is supposed to sign this new contract form uh that right now the way it's written that every contractor every agreement has to be signed the, the contractor has to fill out one of these forms uh i talked to Mr. Mish over the weekend about that. And he's looking into changing the one paragraph in here where it says you just sign one of these for the year and you're good for the year, but you'd have to update it every year. But, uh, and, and that's something I got to talk to John about. But uh, yeah, so it's just not the drainage board, it's the county in gen general. Uh, um, for example, the contract that I have on the commissioner's agenda tomorrow, John, even though I signed a professional agreement like was done in the past i still have to go to the commissioners now tomorrow and get their approval mm -hmm. you know 
even though it's section corner money and I'm responsible for that, but I still have to go to the commissioners to get approval for the contract or agreement, you know, which the commissioners do all the time, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that? They're wrong. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's, you're probably sleeping at that time that, that comes Correct. through you. So, so relative to, to today's proposals that we have, we table this until- Next meeting, we can do next meeting. Can I wait till the next meeting or do we need to do something faster? Yeah. Can we call, can we have a special meeting board? Uh, the surveyor just... told me that they could wait, but I don't know if he still feels that way. Well, I don't know. I, in, in talk, you know, I haven't talked to John, but I don't think none of these are that important that they can't wait a month, you know, but we still have to advertise seven or 10 days are these the in the Mitchell Walk you know. Are these the guys that are bidding? Yeah, probably. I want to ask them yeah. if that timetable is. I'm take my bids back because I'm not waiting a month on because I got other jobs to do. And if I got a bid, so I'll just take my bids back. I will take my bids back. I don't. That's fine. Well, John can just. Shred them. But if we wait seven days, we could open these bids, right? So like in a few days, we could open them. Is that correct, Marcel? Yes. So, but if it's not urgent, then no sense dragging us all back here. Can we have a special meeting just to order still... the, uh, open the bids? After seven days, or do we have to wait to, to the next? No, it's up to you. You can have a special meeting, but we'd have to advertise the meeting plus advertise in the Mishawaka Enterprise before we could open. You have these. to advertise the meeting, yes, before we could open these. That that's my understanding. I wouldn't open them before being advertised. We can still do it this month. I mean, two weeks. But once again, it's up to you guys. I and. Obviously, the contractors. I mean, I mean, if we open it in two weeks. Essentially, they're butting up against Christmas and New Year's. I don't know if they want to. I don't know. I don't know what oh, your Christmas just, looks like. I don't know if y'all going skiing somewhere. <laughs> it would just let whoever gets to bid. It would let them get this work on their schedule whenever they mm -hmm. want to do it, and whether it's a week or two weeks or four weeks. I don't know how critical it is. But water still flowing it would just flow faster after the work's done so. <laughs> and it's how quick we can get it in the mishawaka enterprise also you know i don't know what their advertising schedule is you know if, if that comes out once every two weeks or once once a week or what i don't know what mishawaka enterprises that schedule is you know I think it's once a week, but I'm not. What sure. is it once a week? Yeah, I think so. You would be more familiar with that than I would. I, I, with, with I just, I just room. have concerns that you and know these we're doing this legally. Day. We'll wait the seven day period. I mean, our our issue right now is just the meeting notice. We we gotta publish. We to publish notice of the meeting if we're gonna have another meeting. The reason for the proof of publication is if there's other contractors that see the work and wanted to bid on it, besides the ones that were right. in theory, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, for, as a practical matter, the guys who do this are here and know. But you know, if there's a new player in town or somebody from Laporte or Elkhart that wanted to come, I mean, it gives them an opportunity if they would not have otherwise known. Um, but once again, for, for these contracts, we don't have to publish them. We just have to wait the seven day period. And it, and going back to the agreement, but with the commissioners, the county got dinged to the state board of accounts for not doing this. So that's oh. why I get a little nervous, you know, when we don't, we're not advertising properly or we're not signing contracts properly, you know? One problem I see could be a, a situation if on one of the jobs all the contractors did bid over 50000 and you opened them at a public meeting, you have now exposed all them bids from your competition, and you're going to have to change all them bids to rebid it for the 50000 and above classification. Mm -hmm. That could bite somebody in the rear. Well, we won't. We're not going to open these, Brian. If you're, no, yeah, we're not. We're not opening these. But when we do, we open them here. But they'd be public. You know, we would 
advertise, you know, the seven or 10 days that then we would open them here, then everybody would know the bid. So we're, we're good that way, whether it's under 50 or over 50, okay. we're good there, okay. you know, just like any other, you know, paving contract or any contract that the commissioners does, you know, for, you know, we're not opening any of these. Today. We're, we're not opening any of these, you know, I mean, and, and technically they're not even stamped in, you know, they're supposed to be dated and stamped in and time stamped and all that. They're not even stamped in, you know. Somebody in our office should be stamping them in like uh, the commissioner's secretary does when bids are dropped off. They're stamped in the time, the date, and all that kind of stuff. It's me. <laughs> So uh, would it be appropriate, or uh, I guess I'd like to make a motion to reject all the proposals that we have before us and then re-advertise. Is that what you're recommending, Mr. Surveyor? I don't know that we need to reject them, do we? We just got to- We don't reject them, we can hold them. They're all, so but we should Beaver stay. took his bids back, but assuming all SOP and our other contractors are okay with it, we can, we can hold these until, I mean, if you guys want to have a meeting in two weeks or whatever, we can hold them for two weeks. If you, if you want to have wait till the January 8th meeting, we can hold to January 8th. I mean, obviously that depends on if these guys are okay with it. Um, or we can just send them all back and just have them, we'll publish and have them rebid in January. January. That's whatever you guys but want. If we, if we held the bids now, then they could get stamped in today as Bobby. Just yeah, said. absolutely. Yeah, of course. Can, obviously they're here. We can stamp them in. It, it's up to them. So then the next question is when do we open them? It's sometime between now and the next meeting. Or at the next one. As soon as correct. We, as soon as we can get notification when it's going to be in the Mishawaka Enterprise, then we can set the date. You know when it's going to be advertised in the Mishawaka Enterprise. Once we know that, then we can seven or ten days after that, then we can set set the meeting real quick. You know, this month obviously, but I think we can. I don't know what everybody else's schedule is, but. Will there be more bids for next month? More, yeah, more. I was, I was planning on it, but I want to apologize to these guys because I this is all new to me. I mean, I would have done all this if I knew about it, but I had I hadn't heard a word about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I was planning on having a big slug next month too, but I guess now I'm gonna have to figure out a new way to do stuff. So I, apologize. It, 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 I don't think it's John. I don't think it's a new way of doing things. I just think once you decide what you're going to do, you just give it to Morgan and she advertises in the Mishawak Enterprise. Okay. I mean, be, I can you know, that. seven or ten days prior to our meeting. It's not that. a new way of doing things. I've never done it before. Well, well, we who who is the old secretary for McNamara? Sue. Sue. Sue, I yeah. think Sue did all this before. Right. I'm, I, don't, I mean, that's why you didn't do it, John. Is because yeah, Sue never, took care of all that. I, 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 I know she did. I mean, for a fact, she she yeah. had a button down, eh? <laughs> you have a separate meeting mm -hmm. in every job. You have to have. That's what I had to ask for. I, I don't know. That's a new yeah. process, John. It's just another step that weren't following. Okay. Or you you may not have been aware of it, I had but no somebody was doing it and you just weren't aware of it, you know? That could, must have been. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, this is all new to me. It's, it's just not covering me. It's covering this, this, needs, this needs, board. You know? need to get advertised in that Mishawaka paper. Well, any paper. So, the, uh, so what? Uh, any what, paper. Uh, Mishawaka Enterprise is the... Is the fastest, most cost-effective option we have here, in my experience. I mean, when I do publications, it's who we usually so, use. As we said here today, what would be the soonest day that we could open the bids? Uh, Thursday. You you said you solicited them on Thursday, is that correct? I, yeah, let's well, just say Friday for fun. Friday for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I just... Thursday night or Friday morning. I'm not sure. Yeah, so that no, we don't have the requirements it's not for advertising. We need a seven to, day requirement that to work out to the contract. Advertising is like Thursday night or a Friday best practice. Morning. What we should do for the county yeah, yes. to I make our, our commissioners happy next Monday. What about next Monday? Everybody available next Monday? 
same time? Sure. We know you are. I mean, you know, in the past, uh, when something like this came up, uh, Mac would have like an impromptu training board meeting with maybe three people, three board members present, come in on whatever day all the paperwork finally got figured out, and they would open the bids and call up whoever wanted and let them know. Yeah, that, that's just what I was going to say, Brian. Just, as long as we have a quorum, you know. Yeah. You know. If, if we schedule for a week from today, next Monday, does that meeting have to be advertised that we're going to yeah. open bids? Yeah. And will that get done in time to do that? She would advertise. Yeah, I don't know the Mishwalker Enterprise advertising schedule off the top of my head. I, and I'm, even the Tribune, I know you've got to give them a couple of days before they get it in. So I actually don't know the answer to that. But we only need it published um, is it 24 or 48 hours before the meeting? So from our standpoint, assuming they can get it in their publication, it shouldn't be an issue. So I don't I don't think that will be a problem, but I don't know. You don't think the Tribune, that's where we used to give was the South Bend Tribune to the one that was... You, you, right, we can publish our notice and meeting. The, the yeah. cheap, the, okay. be the cost wise, the Mishwaukee Enterprise is the quickest. As far as publicizing the meeting, we don't have to put that in the paper, do we? I'm sorry. As far as publicizing that we're going to meet, that doesn't have to go in the paper, does it? That, yeah, we, we have to we have to publish the meeting that we're gonna we're gonna have a drainage board meeting. That that's the part that is we don't have to publish the bids at this point because right. we'll be outside of the seven day requirement. We'll be fine. The the publication is not the requirement. It's a best practice, not the requirement for this. But we have to publish the meeting to give notice. I'm thinking about the like the health department meetings. I didn't think those went to the paper. We do. We publish those. We do? Okay. There's more things that going on that I don't even know about. And I know we uh, we publish it on the county's website and post it outside the office and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like Marcel just indicated 48 hours prior to, but we put it on the website and, it, it, you know, you can look at the meeting. They're talking about changing that's those statutes. That, that's just not us. That's the yeah. plat, plat room, you know, because less and less people are reading the actual newspapers, right? And more and more people are going online and finding their stuff. So they're talking about changing that, but they haven't yet. So is, is this meeting room available for a week from today? If we... yeah. Back to Brian's point about kind of impromptu meetings. I did several of those with McNamara and a few of the others. We would just meet like in the lobby downstairs. Open the bids, make a motion to award and to low bidder and vote on it. And you weren't aware. Vote. See, What's you, that? you you probably weren't aware of those, were you? Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, if there was a problem, Matt may just say, okay, get the drainage board member that represents that area here and we'll open them. And as long as he's okay with it, we'll go. Well, we could even do a Zoom meeting then, right? No, no. Got to be public. Sorry. Well, if this room's now, either this room would be available or the commissioner's conference room, we'll check and see which one. For the lobby. The lobby's certainly available. Yeah. <laughs> we got the lobby. <laughs> Been done. But we can get these stamped in today, right after these meeting. Morgan can take these up to him and get them stamped in, time stamped and date stamped. And if John, if you want to get a hold of Beaver and see if he wants to do that, that would look pretty pissed off. You know, yeah. If he walked out with his bids, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He didn't have the time to wait to see what we decide here. So, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have to wait on him to bring him back. So. Wait for you down in the lobby. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Good thing we make a motion to table the opening of these proposals until our special meeting, which will be held next Monday at 8.30. In this room or the sorry. We have to publish where it's at. Yeah. To be announced. To be announced. To be announced. Contractors don't have to be here, right? So open. They can be here. They don't have they to be here. There can stand. Uh, can you repeat the motion one time, John? Make a motion that we table the opening of the these four proposals uh, until 
our special meeting to be held. I would just schedule it for the seventh floor because that's way more likely it's open. They, they normally have orientation on Monday. <laughs> we can use Dieter's office. I mean, on, on the seventh floor. But like you said, we could we can do in the room for that goals. You know, we, we can do it out in this lobby. Yeah, we can do it. Outside outside December theater. 11th at 830. December 11th at 830. So we'll put seventh floor for now. Seventh floor. Wow. All right. Seventh floor. So make a motion to table the opening of the proposals until December 11th at 830. Uh, December 11th at 8.30, special meeting on the seventh floor in the surveyor's office. Is that what you want to do? Mm -hmm. That's I'll my motion. That. Motion remains seconded on the favor. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Sorry, guys. You're good. Sorry about that. I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we are too. <laughs> The rest of you guys okay if we keep these? Yeah, that's fine. Right. You open them as soon as Brian, you okay? Brian, you okay? What's We're it? not going to open them or anything, you know. Yeah, I'll definitely let you guys know, like I always do, what the do bids you are. Think we should be here for that meeting Monday or no? You don't have to. You don't no, have I'll, to. I'll send them out. As soon as I, do. Oh, you let I mean, you can't. You can if you want to, but you, it's not necessary. But okay. You don't want to see us again. <laughs> <laughs> then you ought to come to the commissioner's meeting. But just to give you guys a heads up, you'll you'll be getting one of these forms to sign with your name on it and everything to continue to do work with us. Yeah, it's fine. not it's not our policy, it's the county's policy, you know. Urban drain vegetation, Hawthorne Crossing. Thank you. Yeah, hi there. Chris Godlewski, Avon Marsh 315 West Jefferson Boulevard, South Bend, Indiana. Yeah, this is the petition for a 27 lot subdivision, uh, about 80 acres on the west side of Ash Road, uh, very, very near uh, Douglas. Um, the intersection of Douglas and Ash. So I don't know what else other information you need from me or what, what you all need to do, but I think petition's ready to go. You can answer any questions you have. We need to set a public hearing. Is that right, Bob? That, that's correct, John. I think you had that form in front of you in regards to the, we need, yeah. and we usually, it's my understanding, they always were done like at 825 or something mm -hmm. at the next drainage board meeting. Do we have to notify anybody, John? Any I, residents or anything? I never, I never did it, so okay. I don't know. Okay. I'm assuming now that we're doing this, we probably have to advertise it somewhere, don't we? Yep, yeah, we'll advertise that also in regards to a special meeting for. Yeah, them. I mean it's a public meeting, so yeah. that has to be advertised. But yeah, I mean, um, I don't think you have to send out notices. I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't I don't recall sending out notices to the neighbors and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't think, think so. we have to do that, you know. Is the uh, I know we always the timing was always tricky because we had to have exactly at least 30 days and sometimes right. our meetings came too fast. So if we our next be meeting okay. is the 8th. If we, we be okay. It'd be okay, right? It's the same. It's the same. Well, our first one in January is January the eighth. Okay, so, so that'll cover us if we get it advertised. You know. Yep. Anybody have any questions though for Chris in regards to the urban drain or Hawthorne Crossing? Um. Hey, Bobby. On number four on this list, it says notice of classification mailed. I don't know what that means. Mailed to whom? And then you have published hearing date uh, notice 10 days prior to hearing. That's on that schedule. Yeah. 
No, maybe you're, maybe it does. All right, what's he asking? Number four. Mail to who? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the adjoining property owners within, I cannot remember the number of 300, it's usually 300 feet. Yeah. I can't remember the radius, but you gotta, you gotta notify the, the adjoining property owners who could potentially be impacted. You might want to check with area plan on that too. They may have. I, yeah, I apologize. I never did any of this. It was always John and Sue or yeah. Well, I'll make a motion that we uh, schedule a public hearing for January 8th at 825 uh, in this room on the urban drain petition for Hawthorne Crossing. I second that. Motion to make second and all in favor. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Well, just a question on that for next month, January 8th, usually our first meeting of the year, we elect chair and vice chairman. Does that need to be done prior to this you know, public hearing just just because of the first of the month? Good question. I don't know. I guess we'll have to refer to our legal for that. Yes, we will have to have someone appointed or elected to run the meeting prior to us having a meeting. So then does the board need to meet before the public meeting to elect the chairman so we can have that public hearing? Yeah, you could. You I'm, could I'm, just, I'm just trying to make sure we got our I's dotted and our T's crossed. Yeah. Because it's the first meeting of the, of the new year. Yes. I will not accept, nor will I seek the president's role in 2024. <laughs> Is there a mutiny going on? 1968, by the way. <laughs> you, would have, you would have to get so many signatures, and I don't know if you can get them. <laughs> I just want to put it out there. You just saved us some time. <laughs> would it be better if we scheduled that public hearing in our normal agenda? We do in the normal agenda. We could do it... Um, I mean, you can schedule it for like nine o'clock. Uh, so we run through our stuff and then at nine, that would start. That's how we typically would handle that. Well, the public meeting after our 830 election. Right, we just give notice of the petition being heard at nine o'clock. It apparently needs to be advertised as a separate public hearing mm -hmm. versus our regular drainage board meeting yeah. hmm. and the notices have to be separate like john and i don't remember he's at 300 feet i don't remember how far but the adjoining property owners are all specifically individually notified we've done this for years i mean i cannot remember which one it was there was a judy creek train i think we had remember that room on the seventh floor was packed you remember i don't know we had one of them i remember there was some un unhappy folks not understanding what was going on. Yeah, you got anything left in that little drink box yet or whatever that was over there? <laughs> Get this man, oh man. So do we need a new motion on the public hearing time? Yeah, I set it for nine o'clock on January 8th. All right, I'll make that motion that we have the public hearing for the urban drain petition for Hawthorne Crossing, Monday, January 8th at nine o'clock. So moved. Yeah, all second. So moved. Most of it may say it to set the public hearing for January 8th at 9 o'clock. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. In the past, too, he, there may have been a public meeting like at 845, and if the drain board would go over, we did, you know, adjourn the drain board meeting, have a public hearing, and then re- Instead of waiting around at nine o'clock, 
I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. What do we do? I look to the floor. Oh. Yeah. Well, I I, I tried, but I oh, oh. <laughs> we're to adjournment. Right. Chris. Hey, privilege. Oh. privilege. Did you have something for a privilege on the floor? No. Oh. Did anybody? I, I'd like to talk a little about the Nesta John uh, ditch. Um, Name and address, please. Right? Yes. Uh, Just here. Take the microphone. Right. <laughs> Just consider it therapy, Brian. Yeah, that's what they keep telling me. <laughs> I want a guy to come to your therapy session when it's in the hot tub. Brian Bailey, 30970 Johnson Road, North Liberty, Indiana. Concerning the Nespajani Ditch and some wisdom from previous work up north, um, when they put and built the IN Tech plant. They did a serious amount of pumping in the spring at the same time that all the farmers down south are trying to get into the fields. It was a disaster. And the magnitude of uh, IN Tech versus the battery plant is, is like a, a pipsqueak. And I'm worried and concerned about what's gonna happen this spring when they have to pump at the battery plant site downstream and uh, push that water down on us. Um, there's still a bottleneck at what everybody calls Jake's Lane. It's the Galupski property. Uh, that pipe there doesn't align with the pipes that we've had put in under the railroad track. It's a 10 footer, which is sized right, but it should be a flat bottom pipe, a squash pipe, they call it, because that 10 foot is only good if it's full. If it's only half full and it's a round pipe, it's seriously restricted because obviously it's getting smaller as it gets down. So uh, I've been working on contacting the Golubsky family. The property has passed on and it's kind of hard to find who's in charge. I've talked to Jess Wine, the farmers. He's in agreement on it. Um, we would just like to see something done and try to prepare for what's gonna be coming in the spring with the extra water coming down through there. Uh, so that's my concerns on that. Um, and I've been working with John with it. We've talked about it for a couple of years now. Uh, and it's just uh, trying to schmooze the farmer over because they're going to have to buy that pipe. And it's not going to be cheap. Because uh, But the railroad does use, uh, they have a right-of-way on that lane to get back to their um, railroad track to service it. Quite honestly, I think the railroad should help pay for some of that, but I don't know how that works. So right away and, and keeping it maintained, if they could help pay for part of that pipe um, and the Nespajani system could pay for the labor of putting it in, that's kind of been a traditional thing. I got no problem with that. Um, and on another subject of the Nespajani, I know when we put the pipe under the railroad track, the railroad paid for the whole uh, half of it and the uh, people at the electric plant paid for the other half, which was fine. What we weren't told as taxpayers on the Nesper Giant Ditch was there was gonna be about $24,000 pulled out of the ditch system to pay for engineering. Now, is that moving of that ditch up north gonna be paid for by the battery plant, including the engineering, or are they gonna tap our drainage fund and, and suck it dry for engineering to move that ditch. That's another concern I have. Because uh, drawn up plans doesn't help the ditch drainage any, not 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 down there where we're at. Uh, you know, and then we gotta wait several years to, to have any work done or borrow from the general fund and then pay it back through the yearly taxes until we can build up the Nespajani fund again. So uh, I'd like that looked at if anybody, uh, could look into that and see where that's going. We all are pretty much in acceptance. The ditch is going to be moved. Got no problem with that. Um, it's just the engineering part that was tapped last time when we had something done on a ditch. They, so, they were here last last month, I think yeah. it was. I, and GE's our G uh, GM's already paid uh, Lawson Fisher for the engineering study to move it. Okay. Okay. And they would be paying for the moving of it also, right? There, it's not going to come out of the. It, it's called. It's my under, the meetings that I've been in, Brian. All that's being paid for through redevelopment. Okay, 
That's coming from redevelopment. It's paying for that through the bonds and so on. It's not coming from, you know, the general fund or the Nespajani ditch fund or anything like that. That's all coming through. Good. What's been approved by the redevelopment board, the commissioners and the council, all that's going through redevelopment, all right. which would be Bill Shalio. Yeah. yeah. And, and Lawson and Fisher's had that contract for two years and they've been dealing with the army Corps of engineers, IDAM, all those John law has been involved that heavily so all that's been addressed, what your concerns are. Yeah. Especially I know, downstream. And, and I, I know Randy wants to speak because he's been involved with well, all that. Correct me if I'm wrong. We're, the drainage board will get billed for that work, but then we'll get reimbursed. We'll, we'll get, that's, that's what they said. Yeah. yeah. And, we'll and it's redevelopment. It's the county's development. Yeah. Like Bill Shalio's off. Yes. Right. It's it's the part, uh, you know, redevelopment. It's a complicated thing, but it's part of an incentive to get them to, to come here. They they promised some funds and that's some of the funds that were being used, but it's not, it's not drainage board money. Ultimately it's going to be paid back to the drainage board. All right. But, all right. but so, our permitting sorry, I didn't give you all the details. I just got to the chase. <laughs> a permitting process is not quite done yet because this board here still has to approve the permit for the work to be done on it. Nespa Johnny. And this board has not seen the final plans or everything from IDEM yet. Right. You know, there's still, Plenty of steps that have to be taken. What was that, John? I think that's next month. Yeah, that, that's think coming Jerry soon. It has to be on the agenda next month. Yeah, that's coming soon. But this board has to prove everything uh, that, that goes on on that nest with Johnny. And they have not, this board has not seen the final plans yet. Now, I have seen that section of the nest with Johnny ditch just north of Highway 2 there over its banks more than one time. Um, and I'm wondering, can we have them put silt fence on both sides of that ditch for that full that full length i mean silt fence don't cost that much and it's a it's a good safety feature to go from highway two up to fillmore road both sides of that ditch and just put put a filter uh uh stake the filter cloth in or whatever you call them um to catch some of that because there's going to be a lot of you get one good rain in the spring and the water's going to be running across that field towards that ditch you, you bring up good concerns, Brian, but there's been plenty of public meetings in regards to that moving of that Nespadani ditch in regards to that's going to be a two-stage ditch. So Right, but I'm talking about the ditch that's there now. Yeah, well. well they're working that, really, really close to it. Yeah, they're, oh, you're talking about now, not, not, not in the future. You're talking about the current one? Yes, yes, the current one. Uh, it's at the lowest point of that farm, and that's a lot of acreage, and uh they're working pretty close to it stirring up a lot of ground and if we get one of them big rains i mean we've all joked about it we've lived through a 500 year rain a couple 300 year rains several 200 year rains and i i ain't got enough fingers for the 100 year rains so either i'm a thousand years old or something's <laughs> all wrong with the math here but when you when you design something for a 100 year rain which is usually the common for an engineering firm to do for a business it doesn't even look like there's enough uh retention basins around that place but that's another that's another day another problem but right now i'd just like to see the original nespajani ditch that's there that's being worked by closely to just have silt fence on both sides of it it's it's just good practice you know i, so, I don't know that's someone that we could look into who's responsible hana. for that hana hana she does the ms4 stuff for the yeah. county so uh, yeah the, she'd be we, responsible for you know, put the silt fence within the county's right away, and you know of the ditch where it is now. But John just indicated that someone in IPG's yes. office that handles that that John will touch base with. All right, and and if they don't want to do it, then what do we do? They run us off the place when they're supposed to have a board there with their their uh, SWIT plan and everything on it. There was nothing there. And I asked questions and we were run off the off the property. Actually, we were run off of Fillmore Road, which they claim they own, but I, I it probably hasn't even been taken handled downstate that that's not a road anymore. So I don't believe it's been uh, vacated yet. No. You know, they're still, yeah, they're still using it as a road, but yet I was run off a of public road and, and asked to leave yeah, very I was, firmly. I was wondering how you got over there because I know they stopped me from going. Exactly. And and as soon as we mentioned SWIT plan, which is your your storm runoff. Uh, plan and what are you doing to protect this ditch why is out now you know so we'll try to track that down and you know we'll kind of i don't have some nice 
we'll, we'll try to ask them nicely, you know, to address that, and then to, then we'll take necessary steps if they okay. they don't want to. The the unnicely way would be to 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 plug the culvert under Highway Two and let them deal with it, but you know, we won't talk about that. But I think we've got a, a, you know, if we can, if we work on that, the downstream drainage and get some of that taken care of and, and some silt fence, uh, good, good insurance, putting silt fence up, um, solve most of the problems that we're concerned about downstream. So that's the gist of it. Thank you. all Thank you. See, you're walking better now going back than you did yeah, walking up. Uh, Brian did bring up. Um, a point to just to clarify. So when I, I presume at some point to dewater out there, they're going to come to us for a permit to discharge to the ditch. Is that true? Oh, they're supposed to. Well, they have to, don't they? What? Uh, what? If they don't, what's the um, recourse procedure? Yeah, what's the recourse? What's the repercussions? Yeah, well, that's repercussions. That's Marcel's. Arena. Start pulling permits. Yeah. And I think they're already started to dewater and they've they have never approached us at once. I mean we could enjoin them and stop them. I, I don't think But well, do they know they have to have a permit? I mean once again, I mean maybe somebody should maybe John should talk to Shalio and make sure Bill yep. knows. I'll talk to Bill. I know there's a process. I'm sure they'll there, there done everything process. else they've done. And asked. I've been trying to rewrite those permits to make that a lot easier. Um, and they did um, file a permit application to uh, reduce the easement along the ditch once they move it. But yeah, I haven't heard anything about them asking permission to dewater. Nothing, nothing's been said at any of the meetings that. I've attended about dewatering. No, uh, Randy, as far as I know, GM's never been here once. Not it's always been Jared, um, who is in charge, who was hired what, to do the what they re re reroute the Nespajani ditch. What they have told us is after the construction, after everything's yeah. up and running, the retention basins are to hold the, the water and retain, retain right. the water and let it flow out. No faster than what it's flowing now, mm -hmm. but dewatering or during construction—that's that's the first I've heard about that. I, I'll talk to Bill, and then I also talk to Lawson oh. and Fisher because you know they they got a well. So, so my other question, my other question to Brian's point about that pipe or that culvert at the Galupski crossing, which needs to be upsized or different improved. Is that something we could look into possibly the development commission redevelopment paying for? And then maybe the drainage board could pay for the installation or something, or um, just I, let them do the whole possible. thing. Sure. I don't know. Which but but I, I had Brian brings up a good point about that pipe. Yeah, it we, is it is undersized. And I kind of forgot about it being there, didn't think about it and haven't driven down there, but I, I think that needs to be addressed. But we've enjoyed a couple of dry years, so it has to yeah, I think it which, needs to be addressed and which pipe replaced to a larger pipe. And it is a private a crossing, just, right? It's a pipe just before the Nespajani makes a 90 degree curve and goes underneath the railroad tracks. Yeah, it's just north of the river. Yeah. yeah. Brian, you said that was a 10 foot. Yeah. Yeah. Round. Yes. Set too high. So. And of course, you always hate to set them too low because then they fill in with sediment. So it, it's a uh, the flat bottom would be the best way to go on something like that. It's just it'll it'll still flow more than a round one. Yeah, way more than a round one. I I I don't see a problem asking redevelopment to pay for a pipe. I mean it's. Well, I think we need to compare, you know, compare. whatever we need to do to start that process and that conversation. I think we need, I'm glad Brian brought it up, but yeah. I think we need to kind of get the wheels turned in that direction. So you recommend a bigger 10 foot? Oh, yeah, I would. Yeah. I would definitely go bigger. 
upsize yeah. the pipe and make sure the elevation is lower than what it currently yeah. is. It ought to be the same elevation as what the new pipe is underneath the uh, railroad right now, maybe. Then that would yeah, be lower. Even, even half of that distance would be really, really uh, improvement. Yeah. Uh, but those are sunk in, you know, there's only like a foot at the top of both the pipe we put under and then the pipe that the railroad put under with the, uh, with the electric plant. Mm -hmm. There's only about a foot, foot and a half of them showing. And uh, we wouldn't need to be that deep, but we definitely need to be deep on what's, what's upstream there right now. Yeah, I mean, if we went that deep, we'd have to re basically redo the whole mess of Johnny up to Johnson okay. Road. and. I, I wasn't yeah. sure I what, the, what those two elevations were relative to each yeah. other, so. Yeah. But the elevation needs to be lower than what the pipe is currently. Exactly. Yes. Same with that one on the, uh, what is it, Rogers Park? Down there by the potato sheds on that Oh, road. Henry Road. Yeah, that thing's going uphill 14 inches from one end to the other, and it's holding back water. That's that's on the county line dish. That's, yes. Yeah, it's the port yes. over. I think LaPorte, that used to be a concrete bridge, and LaPorte actually did that work themselves, I believe, on that one, and use their own equipment and they it was too much of a job for them and they didn't get the old concrete footers out and that pipe sits in there mm. uphill and it's holding back water on the uh, back of proving grounds and what well, you know yeah. the farm over there yeah i know so for everybody else's you mm. know concern it's it's holding back a considerable amount of water we had talked about that a couple of years ago with a meeting that mcnamara Randy and I, Marcel, sat in on it over at the, the engineering firm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, mentioned all them things. You know, we got part of it. We've been working on the county line ditch a little bit of time coming up through there. And uh, but that pipe is the big uh, the big problem up there because uh, any any of the ground north of uh, what is that Henry Road? Henry Road. Yeah, yeah, any of the ground north of Henry Road is hurting because of that pipe. Has been for years. Right. Correct. And I have talked to Christine about that, and it, you know, that's yeah, never really went anywhere. That'd be highway really getting involved with that. Yeah, that yes. Laporte Highway, Laporte Highway, yeah, Laporte Drainage Board, Laporte Highway, as well as right. And I have talked to Christine with the Laporte Drainage Board about it years a year or two ago when we first started talking about it, and. She said, yeah, I know about it, but that's about as far as it went. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Say it on paper. Aye. 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 It sounds like it. Nobody can't sit around here all day. You got to go do some work. Hey,